Hello everybody, this is Tim here again, here with my review for Leprechaun in the Hood, the fifth film in the Leprechaun franchise. Um, I'm going to try my hardest to get through these last uh, three Leprechaun movies as quick as I can so I can move on to another franchise. I'm not sure what I'll be reviewing next. I was going to review the John Carpenter films, but I think I'll just go ahead and do the uh, Evil Dead franchise since there's only four of those. So I figured I would do a, a shorter franchise next time. Instead of something really long like uh, John Carpenter films, plus John Carpenter films are multiple different movies, and Evil Dead is one like continuing you know franchise or story or whatever. Other than the remake, so I figured I'd do that next to keep in line with me doing like slasher franchises. But anyway, just jump in Leprechaun in the Hood. It's the fifth film here. I can already tell you this film is better than Leprechaun in Space. Me taking a shit for two hours would be better than Leprechaun in Space. Uh, one to four stars. I'd give this film. A passable two stars. This is a passable film. If you've watched the other Leprechaun movies and enjoyed them somewhat, I would say watch this one. You know, might as well. It's better than Leprechaun 4. Um, it's not as good as uh, Leprechaun 3, which is the best one in my opinion. Uh, it's pretty much on the same level as the first movie, being a passable film, just like the first one. But the first one's better than this one because this one has a lot of generic jokes. Since the Leprechaun's in the hood, they gotta have him fucking smoke weed and at the end, oh lord, they even make him rap, which is absolutely fucking horrible. They actually have the Warwick Davis rapping, which is a nightmare. <laughs> a nightmare. But, other than that, uh, it's pretty much on the same level as part two to me, but I like part two a little bit less, because the three leads in this film I like better. You got three rappers in this film, named like Postmaster P and Stray Bullet and Butch. Uh, they're okay. These these actors are likable. They have a likability to them. Um, you enjoy watching them. And I, um, you got Ice-T in this film, too, to beat it all. Uh, the reason I like this film slightly more than Part 2 is because just that stupid idea of Leprechaun not being able to hurt somebody as long as they have one of his coins. That is just so stupid. Uh, <laughs> it makes me inadvertently like this film just barely more than Part 2. This film's just like like a, a cock hair better than part two i'll just be honest at least in my opinion i wouldn't really say it's actually better than part two story-wise or anything as a matter of fact like the story of part two i think is, is better than the story of this film or well i wouldn't really say the story but like the way the film's structured the second one is structured better than this one this film has trouble deciding what it wants to be whether it wants to be like a black exploitation comedy or like a or like a, a B movie, like a hardcore B movie about the hood with a leprechaun in it. <laughs> it has trouble figuring out what it wants to be. Basically, you got Ice-T at the beginning with a big afro, which I admit I got a laugh out of that. Um, him and his friend like find this the leprechaun underground, uh, where he's got the, the necklace around him from part three. Except I think the one in three was silver, and the one here is gold, I believe. And, um, of course, they take it off of him. Ice-T, I mean... The leprechaun kills Ice-T's friend by taking the dude's afro pick and shoving it in the guy's neck, which, oh, that was mildly funny. Um, then, like, Ice-T has this huge afro, and it, this is like what I'm saying, like, the movie starts out and it has trouble figuring out what it wants to be. Um, it's like really over the top here, like, really 70s black exploitation style. And Ice-T has, like, a big afro, and he starts pulling, like, weapons out of his afro to fight the leprechaun with, which I thought was mildly funny. Another annoying thing in this one is, like, the budget feels really low compared to the one through four movies. I hated part four, but the budget in part four felt higher than the budget here. Um, so, to compensate for them having a really low budget, they just gave the leprechaun, like, telekinesis, where all he's got to do is just wave his hand and somebody, like, falls over or something. It's just a way to keep the budget down, really. So nobody has to like engage in a, phys a physical fight with the leprechaun. That makes the movie feel really dull. This movie feels duller than part two to me because of the, the lack of budget and stuff like part two had. Uh, part two, I mean, I mean the lack of budget stuff in this one compared to like the more imaginative fun stuff in part two, like leprechaun getting drunk and stuff. I like that kind of stuff better. But I like the three leads in this movie better than the boy from part two. And uh, it doesn't have the annoying girlfriend from part two. And also, if it wasn't for, like I said, the coin thing protecting people in part two, I would like this film better than part. I would like this film. Uh, I would like part two better than this one. But because of that, I like this one just like a smidgen more than part two. 
Um, but anyway, this film obviously feels lower budget, and they're trying to compensate for it with the, by using having the leprechaun do telekinesis all the time. But anyway, uh, so he gets rid of the kill Ice T, and Ice T knocks the necklace back on the leprechaun, turns him back into uh, stone. Skip years later, Ice T is now like a famous uh, uh, fucking uh, record label or whatever you want. Uh, famous, uh, famous record producer or whatever, but he still lives in the ghetto. I'm like, if he had millions of dollars, he'd be like in the fucking hood. I mean, he'd, I mean, he wouldn't be in the hood. He'd be in like fucking Beverly Hills or something. And uh, one thing I did like about this is one of the leprechauns, like actual gold things. One of his uh, things he keeps uh, is this ma is this flute that's actually magic. I actually like that one of the leprechauns' treasures actually has magical ability to it itself. I actually, kind of like that. Anytime you blow the flute, it makes shitty music sound good. Basically, I think Justin Bieber might have been using this flute or still is. But anyway, yes, Bieber sucks. I know we all know. But anyway. So you skip a bunch of years into the future. Um, you got the three rappers I mentioned earlier. You got Postmaster P. He's like, they're like wanting to sing like clean rap or whatever. Send out a positive message to like the youth, youth of America. Um, and uh, basically Ice-T is like so over the top in this. He like, he's not with that, you know, save the fucking hood bullshit. He wants a hardcore blow a, blow a fucker's head off kind of stuff. He's just so over the top of that. It's like Ice T playing like an exaggerated version of himself. I just that was hilarious to me. And every like every line of dialogue he has is a cuss word. It just makes me laugh so hard the dialogue this film does. But anyway <laughs> to jump back into it here, the three guys, they suck though and they need money to get their their equipment fixed, so they decide to rob Ice T. First they try to let Ice T hire him, or they try to get Ice T to hire him, and uh, Postmaster P positive one of the group doesn't want to change the image of the of the, of the group to more like aggressive you know uh, hardcore hip hop stuff and so Ice-T tells him get fuck out Dodge uh, what's funny is he, is he asks them like one time so what are you guys going to do you want to join up or not and they're like well man we might need to think about it he's just like get the fuck out of here I just love how he just automatically reacts just them asking like one second you know just to have time to think about his offer and he just automatically jumps at him and says get the hell out of here Eat shit, go die. But I just think that's funny the way he he, he asked he acts. But anyway, that cracked me up. Just the dialogue in this film is so ridiculous. It just makes me laugh more than uh, <laughs> than anything in the movie, to be honest. But like I said, the black exploitation stuff is at the beginning with Ice T and the big afro and everything. But now the tone has changed and it's trying to be just like a B movie with a leprechaun in it. But it's more like um. But still, kind of more, still kind of lighthearted. You don't really think the three leads are in any danger. They decide to rob Ice T, uh, Postmaster P, who's the positive guy. One thing I like about this, it tries to have like more character development with the characters, and more slightly more interesting story with the characters. Like Postmaster P, he's the guy who doesn't want to be involved with uh, guns or gangs, or he doesn't want to hurt anybody or anything. But like, uh, I mean, everything happens in the movie because they decide to rob Ice T. Because they decide to cross over the line and uh, be, well, assholes <laughs> and rob Ice-T um, and steal all his shit. Because they decide to cross the line and commit a crime, all hell breaks loose. And that's what causes everything in the, in the movie to happen, which I find that funny. Um, it's like trying to, and then also like the post Master P, his character in the film, gets more corrupted as things go by in the movie. He becomes like more and more willing to do like a evil shit and wrong shit. Not, not like really like hardcore stuff, but he's more willing to like, you know, gun somebody down or something when at the beginning of the shit movie he didn't want no part of that shit. <laughs> but anyway, so they decide to rob him. And one thing I hate is like Postmaster P is like, I don't want to do, I don't want no part of this shit. And the next scene he shows up and he's like, yo man, we're going to do this shit or what? And I'm like, well, he, changed, he sure changed his mind about fucking robbing Ice-T pretty quick there. But they rob Ice-T. Um... Uh, Postmaster P shoots Ice-T, but Ice-T survives because the medallion he's wearing uh, catches the bullet. And they manage to, they get the necklace off the leprechaun, which causes the leprechaun to come to life. And when the leprechaun comes to life, you don't even see him, like, turn from stone back into the leprechaun. It's, like, behind a couch or something. Like I said, this movie tries to hide. It's obviously low budget. Um, leprechaun, like, comes out from behind the couch. They shoot the ever-loving fuck out of the leprechaun, blow him completely to pieces. Um, 
then the leprechaun like goes back together in a puff and like a puff of smoke happens. He comes out of it, his body's back together. The shootout, I mean, the shooting where they blow the shit out of him was entertaining. When he comes back together, though, it's like, once again, it's low budget. You don't even get to see it. You just get to see, well, you do get to see his hand, Leprechaun's hand, like, crawling on the ground towards him. So that was mildly entertaining, but you don't get to see him go back together. Um, another thing, uh, Leprechaun, like, rips off one of Ice T's fingers and forces Ice T to, like, uh, go find his gold for him. And I'm like, why does the Leprechaun want a teammate? Leprechaun's never wanted a teammate before. Uh, that's kind of weird. It would have been more plausible if they had, like, uh, they had Ice T team up with the three kids that robbed him. That would have made more sense. Like, they all had to team up together and tried to learn to, like, maybe trust each other, kind of like Assault on Precinct 13, <laughs> to work together to uh, kill the Leprechaun. But instead, somehow the Leprechaun and Ice T uh, become an unlikely alliance, which doesn't really make sense to me. One thing I find funny, though, is, like, when Ice T runs off, he gets away from the Leprechaun, he goes to a club. And he gets on this phone. He's like, "Hey, yo, man, this is this is Mac Daddy. I'm at the I'm at the Perry. You know, bring some guns, bring some big shit, ugly shit, machine guns and shit. This shit is real. Come now." <laughs> I just those lines of dialogue just made me fucking laugh so hard. It's unbelievable. But um, Leprechaun forces Ice T to help him. Uh, you get a, you get a kill scene finally. Leprechaun like electrocutes some guy, and the dude just like falls over. He like electrocutes him with green lightning. It's a pretty low budget kill. It's nothing amazing. Uh, the low budget is what hurts this film, um, or lower budget, um, but that kills nothing amazing, nothing to write home about. Leprechaun goes and kills these two, uh, goes and kills this one guy who works at this shop where, uh, the three, the three kids or boys, whatever you want to call them, um, the three leads, uh, bought some equipment off of him, and Leprechaun kills him and takes some of his gold back, and he kills him by making, like, this zombie girl come to life who's supposed to be, like, the dude's, I guess, ex-wife or ex-girlfriend or something who died a long time ago or who went missing one or something. She, like, kills him off screen and you can hear the noises. And, like, the leprechaun's listening to it, like, with a big shit-eating grin on his face. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> Didn't get to see the kill. But it still kind of had a little bit of creepiness to it because you could hear the dude, like, being killed and you got to see the zombie girls, like, makeup and stuff, and it looks passable for a low-budget film, so I guess this kill is, like, this kill is passable compared to the more lamer lightning one, I guess, or electricity one, but anyway, so he's dead, Leprechaun kills this other guy, uh, who they bought some stuff off of, he's like this Chinese guy who works in this, uh, convenience store, um, the Leprechaun kills him, but you don't even get to see Warwick Davis in this scene, it's almost like they had to do a reshoot, and they couldn't get Warwick Davis back, and so, like, the Chinese guy, I think he's Chinese, he turns around, uh, well, the shop, the shop worker, I guess, whatever you want to call him, the guy turns around, and the, like, the leprechaun's hands are there, and it's, like, on the dude's throat, and it's, like, choking him, and you can tell they're, like, fucking fake hands, and they're not even, they're not Warwick Davis's hands. <laughs> it was, like, they couldn't get Warwick Davis back for that one scene, which I thought was funny. It was really horrible. But, uh, Ice-T comes back, he starts shooting the fuck out of him. They jump off the side of this building, land in the dumpster, and get away. Uh, so now they got Ice-T chasing them and the Leprechaun. Um, so they go and, like, stay at this uh, tran this transsexual's place uh, because that's the last place Ice-T would look, <laughs> I guess. But anyway, they go to stay there. Um, the Leprechaun shows up there. He the, the transsexual guy wants to, like, fuck the Leprechaun, I guess. And uh, <laughs> the three guys, like, here, like, noises, like moaning noises or whatever, or something like that, they go and look in the room, and you, you're you supposed to think the leprechaun's like, or they think the leprechaun's having sex with, with the with the guy, or whatever, but he's really like, choking him, or stabbing his claws into the dude's neck, which I'm like, that's so lame, I, the, the kills in part three were really creative, and the, or at least more creative than the ones here, and these kills are just lame, that was really lame. But, um, so you get that. They set the leprechaun on fire. They get the fuck out of there. One thing I find funny is they gotta get the leprechaun's attention so they can set him on fire. And, uh, the guy's stray bullet looks at the leprechaun and goes, Yo, shorty, you ain't, you, you're not even as big as my dick. I thought that was hilarious. That made me laugh my ass off. Um, but, uh, so they set the leprechaun on fire. They get out of there. They take refuge at this church where even the preacher cusses, which makes, makes me laugh even more. But, uh, <laughs> they take refuge at the church 
and the Reverend wants them to uh, take the place of the musical entertainment who couldn't make it that night. So they have to actually uh, play a song, and they start like <laughs> they start singing like "Jesus loves me, but if he don't, I'll find a hoe" or something like that, which is which is kind of funny. Um, and so everybody in the church gets ready to leave, and Postmaster P uses the magical flute to get everybody to stay. Think their shitty music sounds good. And then you get a cameo by Coolio who walks in the church. And they're like, yo, man, it's Coolio. And I'm like, fuck, is Coolio? Come on, man. Please. But anyway. Um, but anyway. So they start playing their uh, Jesus Loves Me like a rap remix version, which I thought was funny. That's one of the highlights of the film. It's one of the funny parts. But uh, then Ice-T shows up. He's going to shoot the hell out of them. Um, then the leprechaun comes up behind Ice T's henchman, which is funny because Ice T has like supposedly a shitload of money, but he only has like one henchman working for him, which I find funny. The leprechaun comes up behind the dude and like blows a hole straight through the guy's chest, which is a decent scene. They manage to, uh, once again, like the comedy, some of the comedy in here feels too lighthearted and out of place. Like the, the three leads are hiding, and uh, they're like, we don't go down without a fight. And they're like doing the fist bump with each other. And then, of course, the last guy, Butch, turns around and the leprechaun's there and he does it to the leprechaun. And then all at once it takes him a second to, of course, to realize it was the leprechaun. That, I mean, it's, it's like they pause for a minute uh, after they uh, fist bumped the leprechaun. And then they look at the camera and just start screaming like, ah! And I'm like, that's so fucking stupid. That's like Warner Brothers. That's like cartoon shit. But anyway, <laughs> that said, this film has a hard time figuring out exactly what tone it wants to be. Jokes just feel out of place. But they, Ice-T ends up leaving because the Leprechaun blows his henchman's heart out. And uh, they capture the Leprechaun in a safe just like they did in part two. Um, but, uh, so they decide to leave and they leave the Reverend there uh, with the Leprechaun. The Leprechaun can't get out of the safe so he calls in like these zombie hookers or whatever he has working for him. One thing I find funny is he calls them in, I guess, to help him get out of the safe. But uh, the Reverend's just sitting there talking to one, and all at once the Leprechaun stabs his hand through the dude's back, or and at his stomach, or whatever. And I'm like, so why'd the Leprechaun call him? He just got out of the safe on his own. So what purpose did they serve whatsoever? I, whatever. But anyway, decent, okay kill, though, with Leprechaun shoving his hand through the dude's stomach. Okay kill. Get some blood. Decent. But um, and then you have to listen to another rap song. There's a little bit too much like singing, rapping. It doesn't really matter if it's rap. I don't, I don't mind rap at all. I have no problem with rap. But um, I'm more of like a heavy metal guy. But I don't have no problem with rap. A good rap anyway. Same way it goes for any kind of music. Um, but um, there's just a little bit too much singing here from the three main guys. They're singing again, and they're wanting to win this contest to go to Vegas, which is funny because they want to go to Vegas which is where the Leprechaun ends up in part three, which I'm like, is this movie a prequel to three? But uh, anyway, I guess you could see it as that. But uh, since none of these movies are connected, and if some of them have connecting points, you can. I guess you could connect them if you wanted to, because the the continuity in these films doesn't mean shit. It's whatever you want it to be. But um, Leprechaun shows up there after the guy's... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, after the guys get done singing, the Leprechaun shows up there and makes one of the dude makes stray bullet like blow his brains out, blow his own brains out. Which I'm like, damn, that's pretty hardcore for this movie, which has been, which has had death scenes and stuff. But you never really thought that the three leads were in any kind of like actual danger. And so just like this is when the tone once again shifts again, where they want to make it like a hardcore, more hardcore like urban movie with uh with a like a B movie style to it with the Leprechaun in it. And it just feels like the tone is just feels like it's shifted too many times. The tone does, but now Stray's dead, um, or Straight Bullet or whatever Stray, whatever he's dead. And uh, so you get to, like this crazy ass nightmare scene where Postmaster P has a nightmare about the Leprechaun going to his grandma's and eating some potatoes, and his grandma's blind, and she fucking accidentally stabs the Leprechaun in the eye with a fork, and pulls out one of his eyeballs. I thought that was mildly funny. Because it's just so like, you know, what the fuck? Why is that there? Kind of, you know. <laughs> but uh, so Postmaster P decides to team up with Butch, so they can go get the Leprechaun stoned on four leaf clovers, so he'll lose his powers and pass out, and they can get the flute and get the fuck out of there. So they go do that. They dress up like women. 
one thing to to get in there because the leprechaun's really horny in this movie. And he owns like his own private whorehouse, which is funny. Uh, one thing I find funny is after they dress up, uh, Butch looks at Post and he goes, "Damn, Post, you look good for real." And Post is like, "Fuck you." <laughs> I thought that was funny. But anyway, but anyway, they get the leprechaun stone. They take the flute. They get ready to head out of there. Ice T shows back up, shoots the fuck out of Butch, but you don't even see the bullets fly. You just hear the sound effect. Which once again, I'm thinking, low fucking budget. <laughs> but anyway, too low for my liking. But anyway, uh, so Butch is dead. You get like this sad scene where he's dying. But you get a line though that I kind of couldn't help but laugh at because all through the movie, Butch is a virgin, and he looks at Post as he's getting ready to die, and he goes, "Is there pussy in heaven, Post?" <laughs> I just thought that that kind of made me laugh my ass off a little bit. He's dead. Uh, finally, Post, you know, Master P has decided to cross the line. He's tired of this shit, so he gets up. He blows the fuck out of Ice T. Uh, you think Ice T's dead? The Leprechaun shows up once again, just waves his hand, does telekinesis, knocks Post down. Um, and then you get a repeat of the scene from earlier where uh, Ice T was like uh, getting ready to shoot Postmaster P, and Postmaster P was like, "What are you gonna do about Mister Leprechaun? He's right behind you." And Ice T was like, "You think I'm gonna fall for that shit?" Then now you got the Leprechaun having the same thing happen to him. Which is kind of funny, where the leprechaun's like, uh, leprechaun's like, I'm gonna, he's well, he's basically getting ready to kill Postmaster P, and Postmaster P's like, what are you gonna do about Mac Daddy? Talking about Ice T, which his character's name is Mac Daddy, and uh, he's like, behind me, <laughs> he's like, if I fall for that, I'm as stupid as you. And then uh, Ice T goes, Mac Daddy ain't dying today. Knocks the fuck out of the leprechaun with a chair, which I always find stupid when somebody's like got the drop on somebody and they have to holler out like that to let you know that they're behind you, like they're completely giving away their position. He could just, he had the amulet in his hand, he could have just slung it down on the leprechaun's head, just like fucking took it, just like put it down on him like that. I mean, shit. <laughs> he could have done that and turned him right back into stone right there, or at least tried to. But uh, instead he just chose to hit him on the chair, which still he gave away his position though, and then, well, whatever. But then uh, the leprechaun kills Ice-T finally by blowing a hole through his chest too, so it's another repeat kill um so then after that the ice tea has the medallion he flings it up there it gets ready to land on the leprechaun um and then uh it cuts the black and you think the medallion is landing on the leprechaun and then you find out that the medallion actually did not land on the leprechaun this is the only film in the franchise leprechaun does not die uh, you find out the medallion didn't actually land on him, it actually missed, and Postmaster P is now one of the servants of the Leprechaun under the Leprechaun's control, and, uh, he's now like a famous artist, Postmaster P is, so he got his wish, he got to be famous like he wanted to, but he also gets to be the, uh, he gets to work for the Leprechaun for until the Leprechaun's dead, <laughs> or he somehow gets out of the trance, which we'll never know because none of these movies connect to each other, but anyway, I mean, oh my fucking legs. Once again, I'm sorry, I do a lot of these reviews and my fucking legs a lot of times always end up hurting. I've never learned just to not say it cross-legged. I still haven't learned that for some reason. Uh, but anyway, so, um, one, yeah, but that's one thing I like is like, if there's a leprechaun, he's existed, he's existed for so many years. Not everybody who ever has faced him is always going to come out on top and win and survive, and leprechaun's not always going to get defeated. So it makes sense that he would pretty much win this round, and then you get that, you get that surprise ending, which is cool, and then you get the worst fucking thing imaginable, where you get the Leprechaun, um, rapping, you get Warwick Davis rapping, which is atrocious, so horrible, so bad, it's just fucking stupid, <laughs> this one just kills the ending right there, that kills it, knocks it down to a barely passable two-star film, it's a passable two-star film. It's not the worst movie I've ever seen. It's got funny dialogue uh, with all the cussing and stuff because they're in the, the hood in this movie. It's way better than Leprechaun in Space. It's pretty much on the same level as Part 2. Um, but I like it slightly more than Part 2 because I like the leads in this one better than I did the, the guys in Part 2. Or the boy, at least the boy in Part 2. I like the Morty guy in Part 2 better than the, the three guys in this one. But I liked uh, but I liked the three guys in this one better than the Bridget girl from Part Two or the boy Cody from Part Two, and also just the Leprechaun not being able to kill somebody who has a piece of his gold. That new rule in Part Two is just fucking stupid. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I like this film slightly more 
than the second one just because that new rule in two was just so stupid. So I give this film like a passable two stars. It's about on the same level as the first one, but a little bit worse. So I'll see you guys again um, with my review for Leprechaun Back to the Hood because I guess they couldn't think of anything else for him to do. So I'll see you guys again with my review for Leprechaun Back to the Hood.